Hi everyone, today we're going to be solving AQA, GCSE Chemistry, Higher Tier, Paper 2. In this video, we're solving June 2022. This one is the part one of the question paper where we're going to be solving from question number one to question number five. This question is about copper wire and copper compounds. Copper is used to make electrical wires. Figure one shows how copper electrical wire is insulated using addition polymer called polybutene. Polybutene is an insulation and we can see the copper wire inside. The addition polymer polybutene has the display plate formula CC single bond with CH3 on top and CH bond at the bottom with two hands extended in two sides. The polybutene produced from the monomer butene complete. Figure 2 show the displayed structure formula of butene. In order to draw a monomer from a polymer, first of all, we're going to take off the two hands and re-establish a carbon-carbon double bond. So CC double bond with CH3 C single bond and CH CH single bond. Copper can be obtained by recycling scrap copper wire. Suggest why polybutene insulation must be removed from the scrap wire before the copper is recycled. So if we, you know, burn with the polybutene insulation, all right, the copper that we will be producing will be impure. It will be mixed with carbon. Otherwise, the copper that would be produced would be a mixture. You can say that it would be a mixture. Or the, we can say that the insulation would burn during the recycling process, creating toxic fumes. Describe how scrap copper wire can be recycled to make new copper water pipes. So first of all, we need to recycle the scrap copper by heating it until all of the copper melts. And then we will put that recycled copper, uh, you know, the molten copper into cast. And then we will, you know, reform the cast into pipes. So just two reasons why recycling scrap copper is more sustainable than extracting copper from copper ores. Recycling of the scrap copper uses less amount of energy and the recycling process also conserves the copper ore that is finite. You know, we will run out of the copper ore at some point. Then recycling produces less amount of waste compared to producing copper from copper ore. Recycling has environmental benefits because it uses less amount of energy so less amount of fossil fuel is burned in recycling the copper. Copper sulfate is a compound of copper. Copper sulfate solution contains copper 2 plus ion and sulfate ions. A solution can be added to copper sulfate solution to show the presence of copper 2 ions. Name the solution that is added. Give the result for the test. Name of the solution. To detect copper ion, we can add sodium hydroxide solution. Sodium hydroxide reacts with copper 2 plus ion to produce a blue precipitate. Suggest so one test. Describe one test to show the presence of sulfate ions in copper sulfate. Give the result of the test. So for the test for sulfate ion, we can say we will add barium chloride solution followed by hydrochloric acid. And the result for the presence of sulfate ion will be indicated by white precipitate. A student investigated the change in mass when hydrated cobalt chloride was heated. The word equation for the reaction is hydrated cobalt chloride in a reversible process turns into anhydrous cobalt chloride and produces water. This is the method used. The student added 2 grams of hydrated cobalt chloride to an empty test tube and then measured the mass of the test tube and the content. Heat the test tube and gently, uh, you know, for 30 seconds and then allow the test tube and the contents to cool and then he measured the mass of the test tube and the content back again. He is kept on repeating steps 3 to 5 until the mass of the test tube and the content does not change any further. So time in seconds up until 120 seconds of heating and then the change in mass from 26.5 to 25.6 gram. Determine the mass of the empty test tube. Since our original starting mass is 25.6 and we have taken 2 grams of copper hydrated cobalt chloride. So our mass will be sorry 26.5 or mass will be 24.5. Explain why the mass of the test tube and the content decreased. So hydrated cobalt chloride has water trapped inside it. So water vapor is produced when heated and the water vapor escapes from the tube which causes the decrease in mass. Suggest why the test tube and the contents were heated until the mass did not change. The student wanted to make sure that the reaction was complete and no more water vapor is produced or we can say that the salt did not contain any more water you know, of crystallization. 
Energy is taken in from the surrounding when hydrated cobalt chloride is heated. When 238 grams of hydrated cobalt chloride is heated until the mass does not change, 88.1 kilojoule of energy is taken in. The student heated 2 grams of hydrated cobalt chloride until the mass did not change. Calculate the energy taken in during this reaction. In order to calculate it, what we have to do is, first of all, we will find out the energy for 2 gram. So energy is equals to 2 divided by 238 times 88.1, which is equals to 0.740336 kilojoule. That means if we round it up to 3 significant figure, it becomes 0.740. What type of reaction takes place when hydrated cobalt chloride is heated? The heating of hydrated cobalt chloride is a endothermic reaction and it can also be considered like thermal decomposition reaction. However, the term that the examiner is looking for here is endothermic reaction because it absorbs heat. This question is about life cycle assessment. Milk bottles can be made from glass and from polymer. We can see the information of milk bottles made for equal volume. So in terms of glass, we use limestone, sand and sodium carbonate and in polymer we use crude oil. The energy used to produce a glass bottle is 6750 and the energy used to produce polymer is 1710. The mass of the milk bottle is 200 grams whereas the crude oil polymer produces only 20 grams. Alright, and it can be recycled 25 times. The polymer can be only used one time. Evaluate the use of glass for milk bottles compared to the use of polymer for milk bottles. We need to use the features of life cycle assessment in our answers. First of all, in terms of answering, we need to talk about the crude oil. Since the polymer is made from crude oil, we know that crude oil is a finite resource and mining it pollutes the environment. Whereas the problem with the glass is the glass uses more energy to process the raw material, which in turn uses the crude oil as the you know energy input. Glass bottles are reusable, so glass when they are reused, they can you know they can conserve the natural resources that the glass is made from and reusing glass up until 25 times all right also has a problem the problem is it needs to be washed and water and energy is consumed during washing both the disposal of glass and polymer can be you know done they can also be recycled Recycling the polymer conserves the finite resource. Recycling glass and polymer uses less amount of energy than making the glass and polymer bottles from new raw materials. And both methods reduce the use of landfills. The other points that we can write on this is that the energy needed for producing both glass and the uh, polymer bottles are derived from fossil fuel. So use of fossil fuel will lead to uh, you know uh, environmental problems such as global warming. So the more fossil fuel we have to use for example in the case of glass about 7,500 kilojoule is you know um, used in processing all right about 750 kilojoules of energy is used in sorry about uh, 7500 in total energy is used in producing the glass bottles whereas uh, you know the use of uh, polymer only uses 1800 kilojoules of energy so definitely in using a glass bottle producing a glass bottle is more energy in intensive and produces more uh, you know carbon dioxide emission when glass bottles are manufactured Milk is also sold in cardboard cartons. A carton is made from 40 cm cube of cardboard box. The density of the cardboard is 0.4 gram per cm cube. Calculate the mass of the carton. So since we already know that density is equal to mass divided by volume, we need to find in this case the mass of the carton. So we'll make the mass as the subject. So mass will be equal to density times the volume. So in this case, 0.04. 0 0.40 gram per cm cube multiplied by 40. This gives us 16 grams.
This question is about the fractions obtained from crude oil. Crude oil is separated into fractions by fractional distillation. The fractions obtained from crude oil include lubricating oil, naphtha, petroleum gases. Table 3 shows the boiling point range of these fractions. We can see that lubricating oil has the highest boiling point range and petroleum gases is lower than 25. Explain how these fractions are obtained from crude oil by fractional distillation. So, at first the crude oil is heated to vaporize all the hydrocarbons that it has inside it. Now, once the vapor is produced, then it is passed through a fractionating column. The fractionating column, there in the fractionating column, there is a temperature gradient so the gases condense at different level for example the lubricating oil it has a high boiling point so it will condense way below the naphtha and the petroleum gases and petroleum gases having a low boiling point will be collected at the top now they are separated in the fractionating column due to their boiling point differences Fractions from the crude oil can be processed to produce feedstock for the petrochemical industry. Which two are useful materials produced from this feedstock? Alloys are made from metals, ceramics are made from clay, detergents are made from fossil fuels, and we know that fertilizer, uh, you know, uh, is made from like nitrogen, ammonia, so solvents are made from crude oil. Another fractions obtained from crude oil is petrol. Petrol contains the hydrocarbons C9H20, a bit combustion of C9H20. So, in order to burn anything, we need oxygen. Since there are 9 carbon, so we'll produce 9 carbon dioxide. And there are 20 hydrogen, so we'll produce 10 H2O. Now, we have to count the number of oxygen on the right hand side 9 times 2 plus 10 which is equals to 28 28 oxygen so since we need 28 oxygen so we will require 14 o2 petrol obtained from crude oil contains sulfur impurities explain why sulfur impurities are removed before petrol is burnt in car engine the sulfur impurities when burned produces sulfur dioxide now sulfur dioxide causes acid rain or the sulfur dioxide can cause respiratory problems that's why it needs to be removed Table 4 shows information about two more fractions obtained from crude oil. You can see kerosene which contains between 11 and 15 carbon and heavy fuel oil which consists of between 20 to 40 carbons in the chains. The student predicted that heavy fuel oil is more viscous than kerosene. The student prediction was correct. Justify the student's prediction. The heavy fuel oil contains more carbon per molecule. As the molecular size increases, the viscosity increases as well. And the heavy fuel oil has larger molecules compared to that of kerosene so the larger molecules intermolecular forces will be created which is why it is more viscous the heavy fuel oil fraction can be processed to produce smaller hydrocarbon molecules name the process which produces smaller hydrocarbon molecules from heavy fuel oil and give the conditions so the name of the process is going to be cracking it can be either catalytic cracking or it can be a steam cracking using high temperature. So we need high temperature and steam as catalyst. Hydrocarbon molecules containing 7 and 8 carbon atoms per can be produced when heavy fuel oil is processed. Which pair of hydrocarbon molecule would both turn bromine water colorless? Bromine water is turned colorless by carbon-carbon double bond which is present in alkene. Alkene has a general formula CNH2N. So C7H14, yes. C8H816, yes. This one will not be correct because this is alkene. This is an alkene and this is an alkene. This question is about water. Sewage is wastewater. Sewage contains organic matter. Describe how sewage is treated to remove organic matter. First of all, the sewage is screened so that large particles, all right, which are suspended in the water, it can be removed. Then the sewage water is allowed to undergo a process called sedimentation to produce the sewage sludge and effluent. Then anaerobic digestion of the solid sewage sludge is done to produce methane gas and to break up all the biological molecules. And then aerobic biological treatment of the liquid effluent is done by using bacteria and uh, certain microbial organisms, those that are beneficial. 
sea water and ground water are treated to make them potable. Table 5 shows the information about the composition and treatment of sea water and of ground water. Sea water consists of 0.5 volt per dmq of sodium and chloride. The process to produce pure potable water would be reverse osmosis. The concentration of uh, you know uh, sodium ions and chloride ions is negligible and then ozone is added to kill bacteria. In terms of ground water, it consists of 0.001 mol per dm cube sodium and chloride ion. Filtration is carried out and this does not decrease any concentration of sodium and chloride ion and then it is exposed to ultraviolet light. UV light destroys bacteria and makes it portable. Seawater is desalinated during process 1. Which pair of concentration would represent X in table 5? So obviously since it is desalinated, it's going to have the least amount of concentration of sodium and chloride ions. So we can consider sodium and chloride to be negligible. This one will be the answer. Explain why the concentration of sodium and chloride ions in the groundwater in table 5 are unchanged by the process. In the filtration process, the ion can simply pass through the filter. The ions are in solution, so they are not screened by the filter. Explain why the groundwater in table 5 requires process 2 before the water is safe to drink. The groundwater contains microbes which are harmful, so the water requires sterilization before drinking to destroy the microbes. After treatment, the groundwater in table 5 is sold by a company as pure water. The groundwater in table 5 is not chemically pure because the water contains sodium ions and chloride ions, such is what the company means by pure. The company means that the water is unadulterated and it is in its natural state. Chlorine is used to treat some groundwater. Describe the test for chlorine gas test. To test for chlorine gas, we can use a damp litmus paper and the result will be the chlorine gas will bleach the damp litmus paper and turn it white. Guys, that's all for this particular question paper. Thank you for watching the video guys. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.